What is good, everybody? Welcome to an Epic My Damn Toys video. Today, we have my WWE Crown Jewel 2019 predictions for you guys. As you guys know, these videos work as we're going to run through the entire car, breaking down every single matchup, giving you my own personal opinions on the matches going into it, you know, my thoughts on the feud, everything around it, and surrounding everything in between. Crown Jewel, you know, not really looking forward to this show. A lot of the stuff I really don't care about. Literally, the only thing that I can say that I personally just give an ounce of a damn about is probably the Fiend versus Seth Rollins in the False Count Anywhere match just to see if they book it to a screwy finish again, if they mess it all up like WWE loves to do, or if they actually crown the Fiend on, you know, Saudi Arabian soil. But outside of that, guys, I'm really not looking forward to the show. You know, I'm not big on Tyson Fury versus Braun Strowman. I don't care about Cain Velasquez. The Team Hogan versus Team Flair thing, maybe it'll make for an entertaining matchup. But yeah, I mean, that's, that's pretty much it. But what we're going to do is run through the entire card and break down all of my predictions and then we're going to get the hell out of here. Typically the shows that I'm not the most looking forward to end up being the better shows, but I'm not having that much faith in this one. But with that being said guys, let's go ahead and dive into this card and break down every matchup. Alright guys, we're starting things off with the 20-man Battle Royal, and apparently the winner of this Battle Royal will take on AJ Styles for the United States Championship later on in the night. And I don't know who the hell is going to be in this thing, you know, it, it could be anybody. We know it won't be anybody from Team Hogan or Team Flair. It won't be any of the big names that are featured on the card already. So with that being said, I literally have zero idea who this could be, and I highly doubt they're going to debut John Morrison back in WWE this early, and I don't see it being Edge or anything crazy like that. So just for shits and giggles, I'm just going to go with The Miz. I'm going with The Miz, and uh, we'll have The Miz versus AJ Styles later on in the night. Next up, guys, we have a singles match between Cesaro taking on Mansoor, and honestly, I, I don't care about this match. You know, they're going to give Mansoor an opportunity here since, you know, he's from Saudi Arabia. He won that battle royal that one time in Saudi Arabia. Feel good moment and all that good jazz. But I have a feeling that he's going to put on a good show. I bet this will be a very underrated matchup. I don't really care about the outcome, but I do think that Cesaro is going to do the job for Mansoor, and I think Mansoor is going to pick up the upset victory. Maybe like, uh, you know, they'll go back and forth the whole match, and then Mansoor will pick up a fluke victory on a roll-up or a schoolboy or something like that. But I hate it for Cesaro, but I think that he will be losing this matchup, so I am going to go with Mansoor to pick up the meaningless victory. Next up, guys, we have our United States Championship match between the winner of the Battle Royal taking on AJ Styles. And again, I think this is just a way to, you know, get AJ Styles some Saudi money and add another matchup to the card. So I think that either The Miz or some babyface, I'm going with The Miz. I think he'll probably be the most high-profile name coming out of that Battle Royal, unless he just didn't even decide to go to Saudi Arabia. Um, you know, another name, Daniel Bryan, comes to mind, but I don't think he's actually going. So whoever the winner of the Battle Royal is will ultimately lose to AJ Styles. So that is who I'm going to go with. I'm going with AJ Styles to retain regardless of whoever the hell wins the 20-man battle royal for this number one contendership for the United States Championship. Our next matchup, guys, is Braun Strowman taking on Tyson Fury. And while I am actually a fan of Tyson Fury in boxing, I don't want him anywhere near my WWE ring. And I, I really like him as a person, but my God, guys, those shadow punches he was throwing on Monday Night Raw a few weeks ago. And then I'm, I'm just not big on Braun Strowman. I used to be high on the man in 2017. Anybody who watches the channel knows that I was high on him in 2017. My ship for him sailed like ages ago. And now I, I honestly just don't care about anything that he's involved with. I guess this is the best case scenario for him because I know he's very talented and he's very athletic and he's a beast. And I guess this is what he is needs to be known for in WWE, man. He needs to be that celebrity showcase where, you know, he can get involved with celebrities. He can, you know, smash cars and do all these things. Just keep him away from big time championships. Let him do his thing. Pay him his money. And that's what I'm expecting out of this. But I think that we're either going to have Tyson Fury knock him out, you know, quote unquote, like knock him out or Braun Strowman's going to destroy Tyson Fury. And I don't know what they're going to go with, but I'm going to go with Tyson Fury to win. Next up, guys, we have the nine-team tag team turmoil match for the WWE Tag Team World Cup, apparently. And buckle up because we got a lot of teams in this thing. We have the New Day, which will be represented by Biggie and Kofi Kingston, the Viking Raiders, Heavy Machinery, Lucha House Party, Kurt Hawkins and Zack Ryder, the Revival, the OC, Dolph Ziggler and Rude, and the B Team. I think I named them all. And we don't have figures of all those guys, and we do have some figures from some of those guys, but I didn't feel like clogging up the screen here for a worthless tag team match. So the only way this thing should go, guys, is that the Revival or the o is that the Revival or the Viking Raiders should walk out of this thing with the ch with the with the World Cup cup. Because if it goes any other way, you're completely crapping on your tag team champion. So I would have it 
where the Revival and the Viking Raiders definitely win this thing. I don't really care which one. I would personally say the Viking Raiders, they just won the Raw Tag Team Championships. You want to keep their momentum high. I think they're undefeated, you know, and everything like that. So go ahead and continue that momentum. Have them win the World Cup here and add that to their resume of long list of championships and accolades. And that's the way you book this tag team turmoil matchup. Viking Raiders win and there's no other buts about it. Next up, guys, is the WWE Championship match between the champion Brock Lesnar getting his rematch from 2010 with Kane Velasquez here. And just like Tyson Fury, I, I just don't care about it. I'm not big on celebrities in my wrestling. You know, I, I just cannot get into this matchup. I'm not invested. I don't really care about it. And apparently, there's rumors about Kane Velasquez having to go away with surgery or be put on the shelf. He may actually have to retire from wrestling because of this knee or shoulder or whatever the hell the case is. And I hate that for him. I know that sucks and that's very sickening. I don't like to see anybody have something they want to do taken away from them like that, but I honestly don't care about the matchup, but if that is true, if that rumor is true, then I'm definitely going with Brock Lesnar to win, and even if it's not true, I think Brock Lesnar is going to win. So I'm going with Brock Lesnar. Is it even for the championship? It is for the championship. I also forgot to add that I'm also recording this just after Friday Night SmackDown the week before Crown Jewel takes place, so they could add some matches to the card and I leave them out so I apologize if that happens or if something else transpires before now and then. I'm going to go with Brock Lesnar retaining the championship. Next up, guys, we have the 10-man tag team match between Team Hogan and Team Flair. And on Team Hogan, we have Roman Reigns, Rusev, Ricochet, Ali, and Shorty G, Chad Gable. And on Team Flair, we have Randy Orton, Drew McIntyre, Bobby Trashley, Shinsuke Nakamura, and Trash Corbin. Now, a big issue that I have with this is that, you know, Survivor Series is literally, what, like a few weeks away, maybe three weeks away, and we're having another 10-man tag match. I guess that's why they're making this one fall wins instead of a eliminations. I think originally they had it where it's good, it could be elimination wise and then some idiots over there in creative were like, you know what Brad, uh, I think we have Survivor Series coming up. So good call there Brad. Way to, way to save your Survivor Series pay-per-view. But anyways, I think since we're in Saudi Arabia, it's a live event atmosphere. I'm going to go with the baby faces to win. I don't think it's going to be adding to anything here. I think we're just going to get a really solid Hulk Hogan baby face victory here. Roman Reigns with the pinfall. Spear to Randy Orton or Spear to Trash Corbin, and that will be the end of the matchup. Team Hogan will go over, and with nothing at stake, really, I mean, it, do it doesn't really matter, but I'm going to go with Team Hogan to win regardless. And for the main event, ladies and gentlemen, it is the Universal Championship False Count Anywhere match that cannot be stopped for any reason at all. I love how they have to add that because they royally effed up at Hell in a Cell. The match is, of course, between Seth Rollins, my man, the Universal Champion, taking on Bray Wyatt, the Fiend, and I think they're going to make up for what they did at Hell in a Cell, guys. I think they're actually going to put the championship on the Fiend here. I think it's finally time, and they're going to do so right here, right now. They're going to put the championship on Seth Rollins. Rollins. They're going to put the championship on Bray Wyatt and Seth Rollins championship reign will come to an end here like it should have at Hell in a Cell. They should not have done all that bull crap. The overbooking and making the Fiend look dominant and then the stopping the match. You know, DQ, no DQ, doesn't matter. The Hell in a Cell match should never be stopped for any reason at all. And that's what I'm going to go with. I don't think there's really much to it. I, you know, they're going to be... The only thing that's stopping me from saying that is that Seth Rollins is on Raw and Bray Wyatt is on SmackDown. So maybe Bray Brock Lesnar come over to Raw, or maybe they'll change the Universal Championship to Blue. That doesn't really make sense, so I don't really know where the hell they're going to go with it, but just for the sake of the argument and to cho to make a choice, and a logical choice at that, I'm going to go with The Fiend to win, because I don't know how that, because if you, if you pin Bray Wyatt, it's over. If they pin Bray Wyatt, The Fiend will be dead, it, it, as if it's not dead already. So you can't pin The Fiend, and you need Seth Rollins to lose, but I don't know what they're going to do, man. Hell in a Cell is a great, you know, observation of that, but that pretty much does it for your Crown Jewel 2019 predictions, guys. I appreciate you guys who watched all the way from the start to the finish. Please leave me all of your Crown Jewel 2019 predictions down in the comment section below. I would appreciate all of your personal opinions on the matter. Subscribe to the channel for more. Subscribe to the channel for more epic WWE action figure related videos. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at MyDamnToys, and I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you.